So everybody, iOS and iPadOS 18.4 RC or Release Candidate Edition is finally out, which for all intents and purposes is going to be the final release of 18.4. So whether you're watching this for the RC version or you're watching this as somebody who just updated to 18.4, this will be the perfect video for you. Let's get into it and find out exactly what's new and what you have to look forward to. Let's do it. But before we continue, if you're a fan of videos like this one, definitely consider subscribing or leaving a comment because it motivates us to continue to make these videos. But now, let's get into the first one, which has to be the brand new food section in the news app. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this. And of course, we have to start off with the build size so you guys are aware. So we go into our photos. This is what it looks like. We're at 7.52 gigs. So give yourself about 15 gigs of open storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And I know that we're talking about the RC, but this will be the similar size for the actual public release. And all the features that I'm gonna be talking about will be available in 18.4 because release candidate just means that this is kind of like the last final test before it goes out to the public. But if we go into our iPadOS version, you can have confidence in knowing that we are on iOS 18.4, 22E239, with no ending lowercase moniker, meaning that this is the RC edition. But now, before we get into the food section, I know a lot of people are gonna ask me about this wallpaper. You get this wallpaper by becoming a channel member, and every single month, we give members anywhere from six to 10 different brand new wallpapers made by Michael Bauer, who's the man, so shout out to Michael Bauer. And if you sign up for the channel membership, you still get all the older ones. So that's hundreds of different wallpapers to choose from. Just wanted to make it known because I know people are going to ask me about this awesome wallpaper. But now let's get into the news application because this is where the first new one is going to be. So if you're a News Plus member, then you have the ability to have this new kind of recipes catalog, which has been added to 18.4. It's inside of the news application, inside of the food section in the news application. And then once you open that up, this is what you're greeted with. Now, what I like about this is that it actually foreshadows to a new piece of hardware that could be coming later this year. But let's pick one just to kind of show it off. We'll click on this one, this chocolate and hazelnut kind of dessert. And my favorite part about this is just how nice it looks overall. So, of course, it's broken down into a couple sections. You have your top right here. You have your ingredients list and your directions. What I like about it is that you can jump in here and read the actual story as if it is in a blog post or a website. So if you do want to kind of read that, you can go through it to get all the details. But if you just want to actually cook it, you tap on here and then you're brought into this kind of like Apple Music Lyric type of interface which walks you through exactly step by step what you need to do directions wise. So as you scroll through, it'll bolden or highlight what you're gonna be dealing with. And not only that, but then it'll in bold letters let you know that whatever's in bold letters is actually an ingredient like the matzo crackers. And if you continue to go down, you can actually interact with this because you can see that there are timers built into it. So for instance, it's part of the ingredients or step-by-step -step list or the directions is a three minute timer. You tap on here, press start. And if you go into your live activities, you can see that it does show up in step four. So it lets you know what step you're on and what you're looking at and how much longer is left. I'm gonna pause that right there as we go up. But overall, I love this interface and how easy it is to use. And then you have this other section just gives you another layout of the ingredients list. So this food recipe section in the food section of the News Plus application has been something that I think is gonna be very beneficial to a lot of people. And like I said, I can definitely see this being kind of in a kitchen or in a, some sort of home pad, half home pod, half iPad situation that just lives in those sections of the house. And again, you do have to be a News Plus subscriber in order to have access to this. And there are two other big ones inside of here for 18.4 that you gotta take note of, especially for the iPad. The first one being in the mail application. So if we go to the mail application, we now have the same type of mail application or at least category breakdown that iOS got earlier this time. So if we go in here, Let's say we click on one of these. You can see that these are all the different categories and all the different categories are broken up into promotions and to news subscriptions and socials, transactions, and finally primary. And then also if you don't like this list or anything like that, you can just press on the three dots, go back to your list view, and then you get back to the normal list view that comes in in chronological order. And to go back, all you have to do is press categories. But also if you tap on the three dots, you get the about category section, which just breaks it down a little bit further and gives you a look at what these categories look like in terms of what type of emails are going to be going into what type of categories. And you can also reset them based on, let's say you add emails to certain categories, you can reset that manually, which is nice to see. So the new mail app is finally on iPadOS 18.4. And of course, it's also on macOS finally and not just iOS. And the next big one is also kind of foreshadowing into that new world of a home pad in the future piece of hardware this year. And is if you go into control center, 
you swipe down, you go to edit it and add a new widget, you see that we have a brand new section called ambient music here. And there's a few interesting things about this because on the surface, it's great to have this on here. We had ambient music, but through a different kind of use or UI, but it was built in, but now they just kind of broke it off into its own little sections. But if we are still in edit mode, you can see that I have two different ambient noises on here on the right and left. If you hold one of them down, you can actually customize them further. So if you go in here, you have your playlist that you can choose from because there's certain playlists that have been decided on. So if your beat instrumentals, your, your pure focus, a couple of other ones, but then you also have the ability to add from library. So if you tap on this add from library piece, then choose, you can actually go into your Apple Music library and choose what songs are being played here. And then finally, another interesting thing here that we noticed is if I go over here and actually tap on this to make it start playing music, if you go up in your control center, you can see that the now playing is now obviously showing that it's now playing. You can tap into here and you can interact with it the same way that you interact with any other piece of, you know, music or media. You can scrub through it, pause it, move to the next, change the volume if you want to. But when you tap into it, it brings you to this kind of application interface, which again, you're stuck on only this page. There's no other option. But if I go into multitasking, you can see that it's, its own kind of application called ambient music. It's not playing from Apple Music. It's not playing from Apple Classical. So this could mean that we could get a standalone ambient music application in the very near future. Another one that kind of came in is in your settings. If you go into your settings and if you go down to notifications, we now have the new prioritized notifications, which is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's using Apple intelligence and machine learning to understand exactly what notifications are going to be prioritized and which ones are important to you versus something that you can maybe look at in the future. So you can actually toggle these individually. So if you want all these to kind of be shown up, inside of this prioritized notification situation then you can and you can turn it off completely if you want to but it gives you a rundown of exactly what that looks like and you get this cool kind of rainbow animation that lets you know like hey this is a prioritized notification and these underneath they aren't so that I like to keep that turned on and it actually works very very well another new one is going to be in image playgrounds so if we add a new one right here let's maybe do my face in space or something like that we're gonna let it do its thing the new thing here is that we got a new style category inside of the style which is sketch we were promised sketch earlier and you can do sketch with image wand but now it's over here on image playground so you have animation illustration and finally sketch to show you guys what the differences look like here you can see that this is illustration this is going to be animation and finally this is going to be the sketch one sketch is probably the one that looks the most realistic kind of quote unquote but now you know that it's there another nice little add-on is that we got seven new emojis and you can see some of them right here like the leafless tree the harp right here the shovel the turnip we got seven new ones so we have face with bags under our eyes fingerprints leafless tree root vegetable harp shovel and splatter and i'll put them on the screen so you guys can actually visualize them a little bit better but i'll take seven new emojis any day of the week and then a couple more big Apple intelligence ones, or at least kind of those quality of life improvements, is that now in the App Store, you get summaries based on reviews, which is something that Amazon has done for a while now, but it's good to know that it is coming to the App Store, which is beautiful to see. And then finally, with Apple intelligence, we get eight new languages that are now fully supported. So of course, we have English, but then we got French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese. And lastly, India and Singapore got their own localized version or English versions support as well. So that's all now with 18.4 with Apple Intelligence, broadening it up a little bit. And also, of course, it is now available in the EU with anybody with a supported device. Now let's get into some of those smaller quality of life improvements. So if you go into the App Store and let's say you're looking at one of these applications to update, you're gonna see a new kind of emoji or a new kind of icon or graphic that shows up next to the update. Once I press it, you can actually pause it. Sometimes you can't do it quick enough because these apps are small and the internet's too fast, but if you press update, you can see that it, you saw that little pause button there for a second, but it happened too quickly. Let's find another one. Maybe Netflix is a little slower. So I was able to pause the YouTube one, but you can see that we now have this resume button, which is something we didn't have before. So that's a new little quality of life update that happened just in case maybe you're outside and you're relying on data connectivity and maybe a big game starts to download. You can actually just pause it, which is great to see. And then from a security standpoint, if you do go, let's say on Safari and you go on here, then you press on the three ellipses right here. Then you go to connection security details. This is a brand new menu to show off the certificates that each one of these websites has. As so you can see the type of certificate that 9to5Mac has, when it was issued, when it was valid until, and you get all the information that you see fit perfectly. So that's a new way to see all these different certificates that certain websites are forced to have. Another small one is that we did get RoboVac support in the home application, which is something that is still hard to show off because there aren't too many robot vacuums that can do that but it is nice to know that it is available. And then lastly, in the control center, you see that we now have little arrows here, which indicates that you have a list. I think Apple maybe thought that people weren't aware that you can have different versions of focus modes. So that just kind of indicates that there's multiple options inside of this widget, which is great to see. And then finally, in this little kind of, when you scroll all the way down, you can see that the 
actual sound button goes white, and we scroll above the sound button and actually turns blue. So nice little quality of life UI update change. That's everything new with 18.4. If you guys do want to check it out, I do recommend downloading it because it has some decent upgrades and features that I would welcome, especially in the mail application, in the food application, and the news application, and things like that. But lastly, let's go over battery life. Let's go to settings. Let's go to battery life. My battery life has been relatively good overall. If you go on a day like here, we had five hours and 56 minutes of screen on time with about 75% battery used. So we probably can get, you know, seven to eight hours that day. On a day like this one, we had two and a half hours of screen on time with only 50% used. So you can see that I'm probably getting anywhere from eight to 11 or 12 hours, depending on what type of task that I'm doing on those days. But overall, my M4 iPad Pros handled everything very well from a battery perspective. So that's just something to take note of. But now let's finish up this video. So that'll just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, there's a bunch of awesome stuff that came with 18.4, like the food notifications or the food section. You have all the new ambient music that's now built in directly into the control center and could foreshadow some sort of home pad type of hardware product in the future. People do seem to be a little bit disappointed with 18.4 because this was supposed to be the big final Apple intelligence push where Siri got contextual awareness and on-screen awareness and it was able to have cross-application kind of interactions, but that is still not available and it looks like we won't be getting that until 18.5 and maybe even 19.0, but definitely say subscribe because we will be covering it as it comes out. But that'll do it, everybody. Leave a comment down below what your favorite new feature was and what you're going to be using on your iPad. And if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, consider watching one of these videos right here because that's what YouTube thinks you're going to like. Until next time, peace, everybody.